so uh, the title of this talk is then why happened instead of who done it and I'm going to talk about the reasons why you should avoid using the term human error. Uh, and you might think that everyone knows this by now, uh, but quite recently I came across uh, a case where this term was used for classifying the um, reasons behind uh, an incident. So uh, this is a topic that, is, that still needs to be talked about. So when we are doing this, we are like in a whodunit, right? It's like a Nagata Christie story where we're trying to figure out who committed the crime. In this case, who is responsible for the incident. Um, and so this ties to an old view of human error uh, that comes from a field um, where high reliability is uh, a requirement. And this field is aviation. So. In the early days, uh, human error was considered the main cause for failures. This is because the system or the machine is considered completely reliable. And all uh, safety issues come from the fact that humans are operating it. So humans are the weak link. Uh, but with time and with the uh, the progress in re research around human factors in aviation, this old view gave way to a new view uh, where a human error was no longer considered the, the cause, it was rather the symptom of failure. Uh, and in this view, uh, safety is not inherent in the system and progress is made by understanding how tasks, environment and tools interact. So we have a bit of progress uh, when it comes to this, to this new view. But if we look at the full picture, when it comes to um, our performance in terms of interacting with uh, co complex systems and with an environment that has a huge amount of variability, then uh, we know that this variability uh, requires some level of adjustment and because this is the case, this is um, one of the reasons why we are successful. It is also one of the reasons why there are failures. But failure here is then considered the flip side of success. Uh, and we no longer need uh, to have human error as a category here in this new new view of human error so it's more like a no view and so what should we do instead i mean we could take away the focus from the individual and try to look at what organizations can do and at this level it might be useful um, to consider some as a, as a point of reference some high reliability organizations and some of the principles that they will follow uh, to ensure reliability. And so they are uh, enumerated here. So basically these organizations are very uh, preoccupied with failure and they will tend to uh, try to as best identify all possible warning signs and to not get to the point where there is a failure. So they will maintain a global view of all operations. And when a failure does occur, uh, then because they are committed to resilience, this failure is going to be a learning opportunity. Uh, so we are going to see failure here as having a role uh, in improving um, how these organizations work. And so we arrive at the conclusion of, of this talk, which is, so we build resilience to failure uh, by focusing on helping people to cope with complexity under pressure and keeping this sort of mindfulness or awareness at a, a, an organizational level. And so uh, we move from this very human tendency to judge to uh, a point where we can then understand why a failure happens uh, and this is why we need to no longer talk about human error in this context uh, and if we take out the human like 
in this, in this, the human perspective, like in this painting by Magritte. I mean, it's a free interpretation of the painting. Uh, then we can see that we will have a lot more to gain and a wider perspective. And this is all. Thank you.